Hi, thanks for watching Simply Tanika. I am Tanika, and this video is dedicated to my unborn child, to the loving memory of the baby that would have been born November 18th, 2017, had I been able to carry it to full term. The genesis for me wanting to create this vlog about my fertility journey was what I experienced. And when I was pregnant, I bought this little hat. Um, I don't know if you guys can see, it's so tiny, um, for the baby who obviously didn't get to wear it. And now I sleep with it under my pillow um, as I'm on my fertility journey. And sometimes I just snuggle it next to my heart. Um, I took it with me to my IUI um, at the doctor's office just as a, just for good luck. So yeah, let's dig into it. Um, I found out I was pregnant. I took the first pregnancy test on March 31st, found out officially on um, like April 3rd and immediately, you know, I'm in the doctor's office when she tells me, yes, I'm pregnant. I'm like, I, I don't want to keep the baby. And so she tells me what my options are. And one of them is like an, an abortion pill. So I told her, great, sign me up for that. And she says, well, I can't give it to you today because I just gave you the news that you're pregnant today. And I was like, why? And she said, well, because once you do that, you can't undo that. And so you have to have time to think about it. And I was like, Ugh, okay. So then she does the uh, ultrasound. She says, you know, because first she's looking at her computer and kind of reading through all the information. And then she's like, let's take a look and see what's going on. And so we do the transvaginal ult ultrasound. And as soon as the screen came up, I could see something on the screen, like a little sack and a little something else. And it really impacted me in a way that I wasn't prepared for. Um, I had taken the test on a Friday, so I had the whole weekend to kind of think about it. I talked to the baby's father, and he was like, well, do you want to be pregnant? And I was like, no. Um, and I told him that we had seen something on the screen, but it was like a tiny dot. And he was like, well, if it's not a baby, did the doctor say what else it could be? And I was like, mm, actually, no. I didn't even think to ask. Um, so on Monday, it was a lot larger than what I had seen on Friday. And it was moving and not that the baby was moving I think it was more like the sack but there was like movement and there was like life and so I was torn at that point but I still hadn't I wasn't definitely swayed I was I was more like huh first of all the fact that I was pregnant there was a one percent chance of my age so that was crazy it was just a lot to process um so the doctor told me to come back you know you couldn't she couldn't do it at that Point. She told me to come back. I came back that Friday and I came back with basically a list of demands, like the crazy control freak that I am. It was like, can you tell me if the baby's going to be okay, if it's going to have this, if it's going to have that? Only if everything's going to be perfect, then I can continue with the pregnancy. And so, she, you know, the doctor kind of chuckled and said, no, um, that, that's not the way this works. Either you are going to decide to support the pregnancy or not support the pregnancy or to terminate the pregnancy. So it sounds like you've decided not to terminate. And I was like, Yes. And so she was like, so now you have to decide to support it or not support it. And so she just kind of went into what that was. Like she explained to me what my progesterone levels were, um, which I didn't understand really at that point. So she told me for viable pregnancies, they needed to be over 20 and mine was at eight. And so in order to support the pregnancy, I could go on progesterone uh, suppositories or cream, um, vaginally inserted cream, which I did. Um, and then she gave me a prenatal vitamin. So I decided to support the pregnancy. And so that was pretty much it. And then every, then I had to come back in again on Monday. She wanted to do another HCG. Um, she wanted it to be doubling every 48 hours is what she explained it to me. And so it started to look good. At first it was like, eh, then the HCG started going up. Everything started to look good. I came in, you know, once a week. We still hadn't seen a heartbeat yet. I wasn't really that worried about it naively. I just didn't, when I had my daughter, like we didn't look for a heartbeat until I was like 12 weeks along. So it just didn't bother me that there was no heartbeat um initially and so finally she returned me to like a maternal fetal uh specialist and so i left the office on a friday it was scheduled like for the next week on a wednesday monday morning at 9 a.m i get a call um from the OBGYN, and my heart sank it was like 9 a.m and i just thought oh this is not going to be good and so it was the nurse and she told me that my hcg had dropped by twenty thousand since the previous blood draw and that I was, the baby was not going to make it. And so they wanted me to come into the office that day. I did go in, I talked to the doctor and she said I could, you know, miscarry naturally or there could be medical um, inducement. So meaning those pills again, or there could be a DNC. And I had done at that point a lot of research and I saw like people had 
done DNCs and wish they hadn't, or people who almost did them and ended up with viable pregnancies, but there had been different signs around it, like their HCG had behaved differently, or their sac had been larger, or they waited until further along, or there had been a heartbeat. And all along, I kind of said, I wasn't worried, like, I'd be more worried if we didn't, if we had a heartbeat, and then it went away versus not having it yet. Because I was like, maybe the dates are just wrong. Again, I wasn't trying to get pregnant. I didn't think I could get pregnant. So I wasn't tracking anything as closely as I am now. Um, so I just thought, it, you know, our dates could be off. And so it was, yeah, I wasn't sure if I, if I wanted to take any action, if I wanted to let it happen on its own. And she did tell me that, you know, because I was such a, like an odd case that it could take six weeks it could take two days there was no guarantee so i left the doctor's office and then i went back and said go ahead and let's let's do the medicine um so i did that i came home she also gave me Vicodin. and she said it was going to hurt she described it as really bad period pains so you they give you these like uh, five tablets and you insert them vaginally um and then you wait and she said it would happen like within six to twelve hours and so it started to happen. It was not really bad period pain. If anybody has period pain like that, they should seek medical attention. Like I could feel my cervix opening. Um, and it hurt. It hurt like crazy. I wish I had taken the Vicodin before I had put the, uh, the before I'd vaginally inserted the um, medication because it, it was a beast. And I was on the phone with my mom. The baby's dad was away traveling for work. I was on the phone with my mom and she was like, shouldn't you be at the hospital? And I was like, well, the doctor said I could do it at home. Um, and so, yeah, it was crazy. So my mom talked with me while I was going through it and it, it it's like going into labor. You're waiting for your, I, I don't know that I dilated 10 centimeters or that I needed to, but it definitely, there was cervical dilation and there was that pain of like feeling things move apart. And then I went, uh, I felt an urge to push just like in labor, went to the restroom and it felt like like little strawberries coming out, like what I was passing. Like, I don't know if it was clotty. I don't know what, and it was, um, I had the urge to like take the things out of the toilet and bring them to the doctor, but um, I didn't. And I do, I wish, in retrospect, I wish I had. Um, I didn't know enough information at that point. I did have that instinct and I wish I would have followed that instinct. So that happened and then I would say, like it was like giving birth again at that point. It was like a couple of weeks I bled. Um, I had to go. I went out of town to see a friend the next weekend. And then the weekend after that was my birthday. Oh, three days after that at work, there was take your child to work day. And I lost it. I couldn't go. I called out sick that day. And I stayed home and I cried and cried and cried. And then the next day I got to see the baby's dad. He came into town. And that made me feel a little better. It was like it was very comforting. Um, and so then... Went out of town to D.C. and then a week after that went to, uh, it was my birthday, so went out to dinner um, with the dad and he whispered in my ear, did I want to try again? And yeah, hell yeah, I do. Like, I don't, I can't explain the, um, the feeling of joy that was in my heart um, at that moment. And so, I don't know, I think. I think my birthday was on a Sunday. I think I went home that night and started like ordering stuff off of Amazon, like tracking your fertility, making babies, um, ordering supplements. Because I had already read about things. There was a lot of chat rooms for women over 40 trying to conceive. So I had been reading about like things, the struggles that people were going through. And, you know, when I was pregnant and that seemed crazy because I was like, and I just like randomly ended up pregnant. Um, but I knew I was going to have to work for it. And so that sort of started the journey and then went to work and contacted the benefits um, administrator at work and work has a fertility plan and so started going to the reproductive endocrinologist and all of that and so that's how I kind of got to here um, and I, I will say I thought I don't want to say I thought it was over the miscarriage I don't think you ever get over it but as the due date got closer I think I started to, to freak out a little bit one because they said when you're trying like the first six months after the miscarriage is like you're more likely to conceive and I didn't in those six months. Um, I took three months time to get everything in order as far as physically, because they said like what's in your body for three months before is what you'll have is what, you know, will nourish you. You are today what you ate three months ago, basically is what I read. And so, yeah, it was, it was a little crazy. It was a little, I think 
the fact that I even remember the baby's due date, like, it just struck me, like, oh, November 18th is his birthday. And I don't know if it was a boy. It was obviously um, too soon. But I do, I don't know. I just felt like it was a boy. Um, mind you, when my daughter was little, I felt like she was a boy, too. Um, she was very much wanted and planned for. And all of the, well, not all of them, but the majority of the clothes that I bought for her were boy clothes. Blue is blue. And blue is one of my favorite colors. So she wore a lot of blue when she was little. But, um, yeah, so as the, as the baby's birthday got closer, I kept, you know, thinking about it. Like, I would be going into labor soon, and I, right now, I think about it, I would be holding my baby right now and probably nursing him. And, um, yeah, I didn't get to do that. So I am hoping that I am able to conceive and that I am able to take home the baby and have, you know, my rainbow baby and um, see what that experience feels like. So, yeah. So that's my story on the miscarriage. I did want to, like, kind of give it a full story and not just kind of skip over pieces of it. So, yeah, if um, if you've had a miscarriage and uh, would like to share stories, please, you know, leave something in the comments below. Um, if you have ways of coping, I will say, for me, I've done a lot of yoga. I go to a therapist now every week. I've done, I went to Resolve. It was okay. There are a lot of people there who have like very strong opinions or people who have been on the fertility uh, train for a while. And so it was a little much for me, at least this one group that I went to. Um, and also I felt bad. I had like, when I went to Resolve, I made a comment about how I see pregnant people everywhere, not realizing that they let pregnant people into the group. And so there was someone who had just conceived. They let you there, I think through 11 or 12 as support. Which makes sense, right? If you've had a miscarriage before, if you just are like frightened of it, I felt horrible. Like I, that I said, I see pregnant women everywhere. And not that I I wish any pregnant woman ill. It's just hard. It's painful because I think of like, oh, I would be that far or, or what would I look like at this point? Um, so, yeah, it's a struggle. It's a struggle. And I did openly post on Facebook this last week, you know, in loving memory of my unborn child um, who God took to be with the angels. Um, and I got a lot of response, a lot of positive response, which was awesome. I'm not a big Facebooker. I don't have Facebook on my phone. I know. Um, and so I forgot, I forgot what a big community it was. And I posted and I went back in, I logged in and there were like all these comments. I was like, what's going on here? And it was people reaching out to me to say, you know, that they were sorry. And so I think that was a huge message too. Like we don't have to suffer alone. Like let's take the shame and the secrecy out of miscarriage. Um, we didn't do anything wrong. And that was something I struggled with too. Like I felt really guilty. I felt really guilty that I originally didn't even want the baby and then I wanted the baby and it was gone. And so it was, there were a lot of emotions to deal with. Um, but I've reconciled all that now and I definitely am ready to bring a baby home and uh, I'm doing everything that I can um, to get the baby home. I, you know, I'm taking care of myself and my household and financial affairs, everything um, so that I can bring a baby home and, and to a healthy and happy home environment. So yeah, that's, that's been my journey. That's been my journey. So thanks for watching. Um, if you have any comments that you'd like to share, I would welcome them. Um, yeah. And if you like the video, please like, if you know someone else who's experiencing or has experienced a miscarriage, please share this with them. Um, would love to chat with them as well. Uh, all right. Thanks guys. Thank you.